I'm delighted to say I'm joined now by Kevin Richardson, who's the Chief Executive of the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport. Uh, Kevin, tell us a bit about 2020 and some of the challenges that you and your members have faced. For the Institute, it's been dramatic. But I think for our members and the businesses that they represent, it's been really significant. And we've seen a breakdown between those that have gone into total shutdown in areas such as uh, certain sectors of manufacturing and in hospitality, some such as passenger transport where we've seen reduced volumes and others where there's been substantial increase in volumes, particularly people in, associated with any element of online, food retail and in the healthcare sector. And how has the sector addressed and coped with these challenges? I think they've actually done very well. I mean, we've seen, we've seen a number of things in terms of response. So obviously businesses have had to cope with social distancing and hygiene, which has been very, very difficult uh, within the operations, but they've managed that particularly well. They've had to cope with disruption in supply, um, particularly those with long uh, distance supply chains and with product coming out of the Far East. We've seen a substantial volatility in demand patterns uh, and a situation where prior forecast data that would typically be used to look ahead has almost become meaningless. And what we've also seen is organizations repurposing sites and people and resources to create capacity uh, to drive forward in those areas that are seeing those increased volumes. And how's the supply chain coping now, coming up to the busiest period of the year, of course, Christmas? Christmas is always a a very, very busy time. Um, Businesses are still experiencing lockdown. We're still having to cope with social distancing. We're seeing continued online growth, which is putting pressures on capacity. And we're seeing retailers adjust to that as they extend their sales patterns. So rather than just Cyber uh, Monday, Black Friday, you know, some of those sales have been running for, for a week or two weeks prior and are still running now as people are trying to pull demand forward. Um, at the same time as all that's going on, of course, people are trying to cope with the demands and, and potential risks associated with our exit from the EU on the uh, 31st of December. And that in itself presents a challenge. Uh, Looking now to 2021, what are some of the challenges and also some of the opportunities that you face as a sector? Well, I think there are some lessons to come out of of COVID. I think if supply chain directors had been asked by their chief executives at this time last year, is our supply chain resilient? Is it agile and flexible? The answer would probably have been yes. Would COVID have appeared on a risk register? Probably not. Um, And there are learnings that have come out of that. One one of the important ones is about data. And it's not just getting access to data, it's turning that data into intelligence and information and sharing that across the supply chain. Relationships have been fundamental. Um, And it's not just about the relationship with your immediate suppliers, it's about looking again beyond the supply chain to understand where the components are coming from that lead to the manufacture, that lead to the retail uh, process. People have been key. And I think moving forwards, what we'll begin to see is people standardizing processes because we need that transferability to move people from one activity to another to support whatever is gonna happen in, in the new normal. There are two other challenges as we move forward into next year. One is obviously the impact of whatever happens around our EU exit at the end of of, of this month. There are some known knowns around customs regimes which will have to be handled. Capacity is going to be an issue uh, for us in dealing with that. But the key concern is around market access. The final point I wanted to talk about was the challenge of sustainability and the route to zero. Uh, So the net zero emissions uh, target that has been set by the government. That will require changes in supply chains. Uh, Logistics and transport are key contributors to to, uh, UK emissions. But in order to get to the net zero transport uh, target, we will need to see a re-emergence of passenger transport. We will see changes in supply chain structure. And we will see changes, obviously, in the types of energy that are used to propel the vehicles and power the warehouses. What choices those bring for us moving forward at this stage, we don't really know. The other thing, obviously, in terms of the uh, net zero target is consumer demand. And we could potentially see uh, some mandated changes to consumer demand, probably not next year, in order to reduce the number of deliveries that we're now experiencing as a result of what will be the continued online trend.